Hi it's Carl Bunyan here, welcome to my cooking videos. Now it's been a while, I apologise for the delay. Um, the weather right now is like the inside of your fridge, it's about 2 maybe 3 degrees outside, it's still, you need a real winter warmer. For that, we're going old school. We are doing minced beef cobbler. Show the ingredients and let's get this banging dish underway. First up, you need some ground or minced beef, depending on which side of the pond you're from. Go to a butcher's, because the way they grind it, you notice in here, I'm going to have to zoom in close, right? Very short, little stubby fibres. That's what you want when minced beef. None of this super long strands that you get from the supermarket. None of that. That's terrible. I've got two big carrots. I'm going to go for a third as well, just to use them up. One big onion. Now, I'm using a white onion in this. If you use a, a yellow onion, it's going to be a bit more sharp. Red onions are very mild. It's only what onion you prefer. But for this, it's old school, so I'm going for an, an old-fashioned style white onion. Tomato puree, just to thicken up the sauce, which will come constitution of this North Beef stock pot. Now, I'm going for the, um, for the gelatinous stock pot because it wouldn't be very smooth. Unlike the cottage pie, this isn't going to be super reduced down. This is going to be slow down, so you don't want the granular stock, you want a jellyfied stock or gelatinous, whatever, however you want to describe it, you just don't want the granular. self raising flour as well, that's going to be needed, along with this stuff, beef suet. Do not get vegetarian suet. It is atrocious. Get the proper stuff. So, now for those of you who don't know what suet is, suet is hard fat that's around the kidneys of an animal. Usually it comes from a cow or a pig, and it's very unusual. It doesn't turn to liquid, and it needs low, slow cooking. So for your winter dishes, like your beef stews, your cobblers and that sort of stuff, it is ideal. Now you might hear the kettle boiling, that's because I'm going to make the stock and I'm also going to have a coffee. If you're born in the kettle, two birds at one stone. Right, stage one, you need to prep your veg. So peel the carrots and grate them. And now what we need to do is we're going to chop the onion. We're not going to grate this. This is not cottage pie. I want a bit of texture contrast. How to sharpen your knife. Always sharpen your knives before you use them, okay? Now, I don't know how clear I can make this. Steel, 90 degrees, 45, 22. Okay, 22 degree angle. One, two, I always do four, you don't have to. And what that does is it maintains the level of sharpness. It doesn't increase the sharpness, but it prevents it from getting blunt. It's a bit like a shield or body armor in computer game. You don't get more health points, but you get your health protected. Chop it in half. Take the skin off. Now, you do not want to cut that end. That's the root end, okay? Chop the tail off. Still keeping the root on. That goes down. Almost all the way to the root, not quite. Slowly go down, slow go down. You don't want to go all the way through, you don't want to slice it completely. Hand like a tennis ball. And just slowly slice, keep your nails in. The knuckle is the guide. Because the knuckle is the guide, you won't get the blade on the fingers. You want a fine dice. What this does is it doesn't tear the membranes up. Get the frying pan on the go. I don't want this to be super scorching hot. Okay, at least not on a stop. A light sizzle is fine. Give it a few minutes to heat up through. Now it's had a bit of time to heat up. Let's break this up. Okay. 
so the water can get released, so you end up singeing the meats. Otherwise, you'll end up with boiled beef and there's no flavour to it. Okay? I'm also going to add sea salt. Not too much because the beef stuff will have a fair amount in. Black pepper. And some ground white pepper. For some reason, I can never get white pepper corn to a hole. So the brown stuff for the white pepper will have to do. It's not ideal, but I can go over the board. The white pepper isn't as strong as black pepper. It's not developed yet. It's got that fruity, slight heat vibe, but the black pepper is that coarse, almost harsh heat. Now the onions are at about four minutes head start. They're still going to turn translucent. They're not cooked through, but. Now it's time to add the two massive grated carrots. These need to have their water content released. Once the water is released, they'll shrink down. So it looks like there's a lot there, but trust me, it'll collapse in. It's fine. Now you see it's collapsed already. There's less of that vivid orange hue. It's a paler hue. There's another minute or so, but it's not quite collapsed entirely. Now, some people could add peas in here, or some would do. So, some people would add peas in here, that's absolutely fine. I'm not a fan of them, but that's just me and my food preferences. Peas are fine. Some people have sweet corn, mm, not so sure on that one. Now, the onions are just about sweated off along with the carrots, so. Now time for the tomato puree. Now this you need about a tablespoon. You don't want to have too much because otherwise you'll end up with that overpowering tomato taste. You don't want that and you need to cook it through because otherwise you'll end up with that cloy tart acid flavour. You don't want that. Not from this. This is a smooth rustic style dish. It, 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 it's really odd to explain but it works, trust me. So now it's time to turn the heat down to low and pour over half a litre of North Repeat Sunblock. Now, that needs to slowly cook down for at least 10 minutes. I've got in a bowl here 170 grams of self-raising flour and 85 gram of the dried suet stuff. That's what it looks like if you haven't seen it before. Uh, a little at a time, start mixing it. I forgot the mixing fork. Believe it or not, this is what you use. This just creates the best textures. You don't want it to be too wet. You don't want it to be too dry, but if it's a bit dry, you can add a bit of water. It's a lot easier to add a bit more water than it is to add a bit more flour and to have it not overwork. So, what it should look like, okay? Should look like it's pliable, like almost like Play Doh. So it's stick. Roll it down. Roll flour hands. Roll it. And spread it out now. First up, what we do is we take the mixture of the beef and slide it in. Because if it's too deep, it doesn't work as well. It needs to be relatively shallow, like about an inch deep, something of like that. Spread the beef around, particularly in the corners, and look at that steam. That steam is what's going to help in the next phase. This is always nervy. Okay, the aid of the bench scraper. Get in. Underneath. And that goes into the oven for 50 minutes to one hour at gas mark four. The top will be viciously bubbling and the mince beef and the gravy, and that'll be beautifully set and golden brown. I'll show you what it's like in an hour. That is done. That is oh 
have a look at that, you beauty! The gravy is nice and thick, crust, solid, absolutely, oh, and the smell. Oh, it's got me excited. Right, I'm going to have to serve up a portion of this. This serves four portions, but who am I kidding? This is not going to last. When it is this cold outside, this is just beautiful. The top crust, crisp on the top, but a beautiful undercurrent of softness underneath. Oh my. And the rinse beef and the gravy have slightly evaporated into it, so it's steamed. So you get the flavour of the beef in there. Oh my days. This is just a winter warmer at its finest execution. I have been Anadine Star and Colin Munion. Good night.